Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Today we're doing an unboxing. This has just arrived from the post office. I haven't got a clue what it is, I can't remember. It's something off of eBay, no doubt. So I thought we'd have a go at opening this and do a surprise unboxing and see what it is that we've got in here. I don't remember what it was. Hopefully it's something new for the collection. Something that I haven't got before. Nice box, nice bit of packaging. That's just rubbish. That can go in the recycling. Well, it's definitely a camera of some description. Quite a small camera. Uh, I should seal it up in a bag. Scratch it. Let's see what it looks like. It's a Pentax. I can't remember why the Pentax. Yeah, it's pretty securely wrapped and well protected, isn't it? Cap on it, which is nice. This is an MV1 Ooh, Pentax M series, one of the smaller Pentax cameras, quite small and light. Are you going to focus today? Yeah, MV1. It's got a body cap on it, so that's pretty good. It doesn't look in too bad condition actually, it's not covered in dust. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It's got the lugs on it, which is good. Shelf time of the look of it. I don't know this camera, I don't know what the specs of it are. Auto, 100 to the second is the sync speed, and B. Looks like that's a shutter release. Let's put it for a cable, we've got a film advance. Does the film advance work? Yeah, let's move on. Cop the shutter. And I suppose B is mechanical. Auto implies that it's a shutter priority camera, uh, aperture priority camera, sorry, and it's still firing. So I look inside, it's got a, this camera, oh, it's a proper Pintax cap, looks nice. So I look inside, yeah, you can see that the mirror damper is a bit, uh, Distressed, but we've got the torch. You can actually see what's going on in there if I can find the torch. Give it once over and see what we've got. So you can see that the mirror damper foam is. I'm going to focus today or not. You can see the mirror damper foam's corroded away. Hasn't really stuck to the mirror too much. The mirror looks quite clean. But yeah, the mirror damper foam is uh, to put. That will need replacing. It's just firing on all speeds. Be it going up. We can see the back of the camera, so we can see that the shutters actually seems to be working. That's cool. Lens release button's there. So timer sounds mechanical. <laughs> Bit of exercise then. Yeah, it does some time, it does sort of work ish. K mount cameras, these ones. So it takes the uh, the K series lenses, but not the automatic ones, it takes the manual lenses. Hot shoe, X synchronization, so that's for electronic flash. We've got a dial here. Oh. Zoom you in a bit, it might work better than me shaking it around all over the place. So, ASA dial, maybe it's, yeah, it's a lift to, to turn. So, it starts at a oh, weird sort of 32, maybe that's 25. It starts at 32 and it goes all the way up to 1600. So, I think we're going to put some uh, maybe HP5 for this one. And we've Sort it out, rewind, crank, pull up. There's the back memo 
holder, it's quite nice. On the bottom we've got a couple of covers, I suspect this is for a, a winder, an auto winder. The button for rewinding that disengages the, uh, the cranky bits up there, the sprockets go through. And tripod mount, so I guess there's a battery that's supposed to go in there. So let me find a penny to open that up with. And we'll have a look and see. Got a penny, and I'm guessing that this would take, take um, SR44s, LR44s at a pinch, but I don't recommend LR batteries because they just don't last as long. The SR batteries cost a little bit more, but they will last oh, easily a year, maybe two years, depending on usage. LR batteries don't seem to last so long in my experience. So, in my humble opinion, you're better off. Right, there's the batteries out. Battery. Um, there's another battery in there. So again, we're looking for corrosion in the battery compartment because that one was sticking in there. So I don't know if it will focus on that. Yeah, you can see that battery's had it. So there's not a lot of point in putting the voltmeter on that. And it says that is an A76. What's the other one? That's an A76 as well, Oop, into the shop. Yeah, those batteries don't look too, too clever, so let's try some fresh batteries in there. See if it's got any life in it. So we'll see an electronic camera being uh, aperture priority. This would have come out in the late 70s, when well, electronics started to play a bigger role in cameras. Zoom you out again, these are some new batteries that I bought, they are 44 Zoom you out. So it takes two of these, I'm pretty sure. A lot of cameras at this time took this. These sort of batteries. Oh, this packaging for these things is annoying. There's one. It's always worth having a stock of spare batteries. The trouble is you never know which ones you're going to need. So. But SR44 is a pretty common battery used in cameras as well as wean cells for the earlier Oh, sorry about that. Mercury batteries. Right. Um, I've lost the bloody batteries now. There they are. So it was plus facing up, I think, wasn't it? Let's have a look. Usually plus facing up, that's the wrong way around. That in there, and the battery. That should screw down into there. Nice and easy. No real corrosion in there, so that's quite good. So if we put this on the auto setting. Same speed. So maybe I've got my batteries in the wrong way around. Hmm. Okay, maybe the batteries are the wrong way around. Battery open. Yeah, it looks like a pretty nice camera in pretty good condition. Um, I quite fond of these little M series cameras. It's a bit like uh, you had the OM2, of course, which came out in the early 70s with aperture priority. That was one of the early aperture priority cameras. This is kind of classed as a starter camera, really, because it's uh, it's only got the uh, the aperture priority. Maybe the negative is supposed to go up. Maybe I've done it completely wrong. I know you're going to be saying in the comments, I did plan on filming the Nikon S, uh, EM today, but this turned up, so I thought that would be a better option. 
So again, if I cover the, there we go. So that's on a long exposure now because I've blocked the light going into it. So that's good. Until it finishes doing the exposure, or maybe I'm going to have to stop it like so. See if I can find the lens for us. It's a K series camera, so it's going to need a K series lens. Have we got any K series lenses lying about? And it just so happens that I have a K series lens here. This is a 80 to 200 mil, and this is a, a Pentax M. And if I take that off, red dot to red dot, line it up, and then turn clockwise, take that off. Nice lens actually, it's got a built in lens hood and it's a push pull, it's a little bit stiff, but yeah, it's a push pull. It's what I call a dust sucker because it blows air through the camera when you move it backwards and forwards. So, if we try it wide open, so that's an aperture of f4.5 on auto. It fires at that speed. I stop it all the way down to 32. It should give us a longer exposure, which it does. So yeah, it looks it appears to be working. Which is happy days. That's quite a nice camera. Doesn't need to draw in the exposure like the OM does. I quite like that feature because if the lighting changes, it can change the settings on the fly. But yeah, this is quite nice. Okay, let's have a look inside now. Oop. Right there we can see the shutter. Looks like it's a vertical travelling shutter. Oh, it's pretty. So take up spool, film, advance. Film goes in this side, advances across. Let's have a look at the ceiling, etc. It doesn't look too bad. I think it's worth testing this camera out and using black tape after taking a couple of shots just to make sure it stays light tight. Pressure plate looks in pretty good condition. Yeah, it's, it seems to be quite nice actually. There we go. Shutter's working. There's no oil or anything in there. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a, quite a nice camera. That one, very interesting. So there you go folks, that's the video for today, a surprise unboxing of a Pentax MV1. Comments, questions, queries down below if you use this camera and got any uh, tips to pass along, please let us know. I'd say it's a fairly useful starter camera because it's uh, it's aperture priority, so you've only got one, well, two things to worry about. Set your ISO speed on the dial. Decide what aperture you want to use. Do you want to go for depth of field? Or do you want to go for shallow depth of field? You know, bokeh. Not with this particular lens, maybe. But to decide on what aperture you want to shoot at. Put it on auto. And I guess it displays the shutter speed in the viewfinder. Excuse me, I'll just have a look and see what it says to you in the viewfinder. So hold it up to your eye, press the button down, and it's giving me an amber light. I don't know what the amber light means, but there's an amber light on there, so. Ah, oh, there it goes green, so it goes green and amber. I'm assuming amber is a slow shutter speed for you camera shake and green is okay so that's fairly simple yeah that's quite cool ideal starter camera they're fairly cheap I don't know what I paid for this one but it wasn't more than 10-15 pounds off the famous eBay that's without a lens obviously um, plenty of these M series lenses around the genuine Pentax ones, or there's plenty of K mount lenses from the likes of Shinon and Ricoh. They all kind of share the K mount, it's quite a popular mount, that's where it was, or still is, it's still on the Pentax digital cameras. But yeah, make a nice little starter camera. We'll do a video where we load some film in it and uh, 
take some pictures, etc., just see what it's like. It depends on the lenses. The, the camera bodies are really just a light tight box. So as long as it sort of fulfills that function of A, keeping light off the film when you don't want it to be on the film. And it has a shutter and some way of adjusting it. That's where you need to worry about the lens is going to be the biggest contributor to the quality of the image. So you want uh, you want half decent lenses. Very little fungus, preferably no fungus, no oil on the aperture blades and uh, nice and clean. Uh, you should be away, but yeah, that's today's film. So any comments, questions, queries down below, let us know what you think. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and whatever it is, share and all that sort of rubbish, you know. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one.